What's going on engineers? Welcome to part three of the Node.js basic series. In this video we're going to go over installation of Node.js and how to run Node.js programs. The first step to installing Node.js is to download it. So grab your favorite browser, go over to nodejs.org, click on the downloads button. Depending on when you watch this video will depend on what version it goes to when you click on downloads. Right now the latest LTS is 8.12.0. So that's the one you, you would download if you watch it today. And then there's several versions. You're probably going to pick the 64-bit Windows installer if you're on Windows. You'll pick the package file for Mac OS, 64-bit. And then for Linux, you have a couple of options. The most popular one would just be the x86, x64 one, probably 64-bit. So on Linux, once you've downloaded the file, you should have a tar.exe file to extract that. Simply do tar xf, specify the file. And then you'll be left with the folder node-v8.12.0. Inside that folder, the thing that we're interested in is the bin folder, which contains your npm and your node binaries. From here, you can use the node binary to run programs directly, or if you want to just use node at the command line, you can put that into your path. Once it's in your path, then you'll have it available right from the command line node version. I'm not running Mac or Windows, so I can't show you exactly how to do it, but on Mac, you'll download that package file, open up the package file, and then drag the software into your computer. On Windows, you'll have an MSI file, you'll double click it, follow the instructions on the screen, and then you should have Node.js after that. Next thing is the actual running of the programs. So the good thing is, is whether you're on Linux, Mac, or Windows, running the program is the exact same process. You'll simply open a terminal, which I've done here, then you'll navigate to your file you want to run. I created a test file called test.js and I simply just put console.log test. So I come over to my terminal, I type node, test.js, hit enter, and it executes the code. This is kind of the first difference between browser JavaScript and Node.js JavaScript, is that in the browser you open a file, you open a page that contains some code, and then it executes it there. With Node.js, you write your code in a file, and then you run it with the Node.js binary. If you have any experience with languages like Python, Ruby, or PHP, then you know that you could just go to the command line, you type the name of the program, and then the file, and then it will run that program. And you should notice now that Node.js is no different than any of those languages. So I want to focus now more on network-connected applications. Now, while Node.js is more than happy to execute any code you throw at it, where it gets its real power, is for network connected applications. So I've created a second file here called server.js, which I'm going to use to kind of speak to the network connected application portion of this. So while at this stage in the series, it's not important that you understand what this code does, as long as you understand that it creates a new server that listens on port 8080, and every connection, all it does is it just sends the text test to it, and then ends. The important thing to understand here is that Node.js is its own web server. In fact, if you were to take this code and you were to listen on port 80 instead and throw it onto a cloud server, you could start it up and connect to it, no problem. This is different than, say, a language like PHP, which uses another web server, usually Apache with mod PHP, to coordinate the execution of uh, different scripts. In the Apache model, a request comes in and then it routes that to the proper PHP file, that file is executed, and then the result comes back through Apache and back to the user. In this program, the request comes directly in to the server, and then just the output goes right back out. Now, just because Node.js can be its own web server, doesn't mean it should be its own web server. What the Node.js HTTP server is really good at is running JavaScript, not so much things like images, style sheets, and beyond. So let's talk about a common pattern that you'll find on a cloud server that leverages the best of a couple pieces of technology. Commonly what you'll see is a Node.js HTTP server running on like port 8080 or really any port other than 80. And then you'll see a good web server such as Nginx or Apache sitting in front of the Node.js HTTP server. And that's going to be running on port 80 or 443 depending on if you're using SSL or not. This means that in that model, a request will come in to either Apache or Nginx. Apache or Nginx will decide if it can handle the particular request. So if the request is for anything other than a request for Node.js, it'll simply handle it itself. So if it's an image, it would just render that image back to the user. And then Node.js, 
you know, the Node.js server wouldn't even know the difference. However, if it's not an image, what it can do is just forward it on to the HTTP server here, and then it can execute that code. The technical term for this is called reverse proxying. So if you're creating a network connected program, you'll invariably come over to a terminal, you'll run, you know, your server.js, and then it's going to just hang forever. You know, it's not going to finish because it's waiting for connections. And then from there, you can connect to that HTTP server and it'll render the word test. And don't worry if you didn't understand any of that syntax, because we're going to cover a lot of this in depth as the series progresses. This was not designed to be a tutorial on, on the Node.js HTTP server itself. We're, we're going to cover that on a specific video. And that's it for installing Node.js and running programs. As always, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next video.